We were doing stuff on the wheel in space. We were going to this space museum. It was a rocket ship. And I just said, hey, look at this. Uh, we forgot to work for Wendy's. Look at this. Uh, yes, 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 yes. And then she came in with her line. <laughs> <laughs> it's just smut. Yeah, Any more yeah, questions? Yeah, yeah. What, anybody else? Oh, we've got a few now. That's good, that's good, that's good. Well, while you're doing, while you're down there, I was going to say, while you're going down there. Well, I'm down there. I, I was steady I was in, on. I was in, no, I was in Canada. Yeah. And these two 12-year-old girls came up. And they had these, they'd done this at home, two little paintings. One was, look at the size of that thing. And yeah. the other one said, yes, Jamie, it is a big one. Look what we did in, in art class. And what did your <laughs> teacher think you were? Oh, no, it's from Doctor Who. Oh, that's all right, that's fine then. <laughs> we'll give you an aid for that one. Who was it who got the hands up first? Hello, you all right? Hi, um, I was watching the War Games last night, completely coincidentally, but I was wondering if, in fact, you had both stayed, but Patrick had left. How do you think both you personally and also the characters of Jamie and Zoe would have coped with or dealt with the change in the Doctor and the direction the series ultimately went from that point with the Earth-based stories um, from that point onwards? I don't know actually because it couldn't, I don't know whether it would have worked. I don't think it could, we, it would never have been the same, it could it never have no. been. The same, I, that's for sure. We wouldn't have had the same chemistry with poetry, I don't think. No, I don't think we would. Because um, John was very sort of uh, old school vaudeville, and I, I'm, I'm the star of the show, I'm the top of the bill, whereas Patrick would never ever say, that, you know, I'm the doctor, I'm the star of the show. He, he, he was never the star of the show. <coughs> oh, so I was like, so you, you were just, 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 a, just a team, really. Um, well, that was nice then, so you were all seen as equals, and that's how Patrick saw that you were all equals. And I had, I had a story that, that Wendy, had, when she found out it was John Pertwee, she said, I'm not going to do John Pertwee, he's six foot four and I'm four foot six. <laughs> and when it's, when it's his close and we see my head, it's my close and we see his crutch, and then we go, <laughs> 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 Who's got another question? Anybody else? Oh, all right. All right, I'll come to you, I'll come to you. Okay, hi. Oh, Fraser. <laughs> Uh, I had to follow that. I just wanted to ask, how did you feel the BBC was treating Doctor Who in, in your time on it? Was it still treated with a bit of respect by the BBC, or were they taking you for granted around that time? I think we were treated okay. Oh, yes. Bear in mind, we were very much a children's television programme, so we, and we came under that, the show came under that budget mm. of a children's yeah, yeah. television programme, and I think they were... You know, they were they were pretty good to us. I don't think we, well, we, we, we had any complaints in that. As you said, we, we shot a television centre, which was the, the, the starship sort of enterprise of BBC. We weren't shuffled into no, it was like studio no. all the time. I, th I think I was more irked later on when we became a bit sort of... I know they call us the classics now. It's quite nice to be called a classic, but... Um, it, you know, you hear on TV, we're going to start from beginning, and they start from... Um, John, no, John Pertwee, because it was colour, and it's, it's like, actually, that wasn't the beginning. So I get a bit miffed at that, but... And also, 50th anniversary was a bit of a... That, that made us all a bit grumpy. <laughs> Um, with just the not knowing how to fit us old ones in. Um, but at the time, we were treated really well. Yeah, we were. We, we were. And, and Peter Davison and Colin Baker, they always said it wasn't for Patrick, you, you would never heard of it. You know, because if he had failed that crossover, that regeneration, you'd never, you know, the BBC would have dropped the show, without a doubt. But I, at the time, I, Sean, they, I thought Sean's son was. Every time I asked for a rise, they said, no, you're children's television, and Sean Sutton is head of children's. Then I found out, no, he was head of drama, so the BBC owes a lot of money. Okay. Get on to it, friends. We should, we should we'll sort it. it. Drama, who's, who's it along here? Hi, I love you, all right. It's like the Jeremy Kyle show, isn't it? <laughs> no, they're not fighting. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, you're, you're the one, you should... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just, sorry, <laughs> uh, 
Um, basically, Fraser, if you'd known you were going to be in so long, do you think you would have tried to use a different accent or more sort of the usual Yorkshire than Scottish? And... Oh no, you had to be Scottish. You know, yeah. Jamie always, because you're you know, from the Highlands, and of course my mother, I'm very proud of my Scottish accent and my Scottish heritage, because my mother was from Scotland, so, you know, I, I breed horses and, and you always take it from the dam side of the breeding, so I would say, no, I'm, I'm sort of from my mother's side, the Scottish, and. Uh, uh, luckily, I was able to use my Scottish accent, whereas in a film I did called X the Unknown, I was only 12 years old, and my mother made me do this terrible Scottish accent. I can't do it! No, I can't! I can't! I swore an oath! I said, dear, that's an awful Scottish accent, but my, my mother was hammering it into me. But no, now, it could have been Yorkshire, I mean, that was for Joe Sugden later, later on in life. The reruns are fantastic at the moment. I love your Facebook page. I, I think the reruns are really good. That hat that you were wearing the other day was sexy. Yeah, they call it Peaky Blind. Oh. Peaky Sugden. <laughs> Never mind Peaky Blind. You looked fit. Oh. Steady. <laughs> Between the complexity of some of the dialogue and the occasional double entendre, did you ever run into difficulty with the dialogue? Yeah, I did because I had quite a lot of technical stuff to say <laughs> sometimes. And when I do big finish sometimes, they give me pages of technical dialogue, which is uh, tricky, but uh, never, to, never so much that I couldn't get my tongue out eventually. But are you all right with? No, because I, I was, for me, being a Highlander, I was just asking him the questions. I, I was, I was the kid watching the TV instead of turning to the dad. Yeah, I go, Doctor, what's that? Why are they doing that? Who, who's that then? Why is it going that way? Can we not go that? I was the kid at home going. Why, why are they going down that way? You know? Yeah, as far as Zoe was concerned, you were infuriating because you were so stupid. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. Bossy boots, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, that lovely scene, though, is where you slid because you were... S oh, stop it. Oh. You always bring that up at panels. No, it's just where I slipped on some foam and burst out laughing when I shouldn't have done. And, Years later, when we were doing a commentary to cover the story, um, I had no idea, and the director was sitting next to me, and I hadn't seen him since 1968, and I saw this, and I said, oh, I can't believe it, I am so sorry. It's appalling that I It was all this foam, and we couldn't do another take. Patrick. And so Patrick slid, and you were so... I just thought it was the funniest thing I'd ever seen, but I wasn't supposed to be laughing at that point. So if, if you ever see that ever... Which story was it? I don't know, you bring it up every time. <laughs> and she apologised to Michael Ferguson. I'm sorry. I did, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Can, my question is uh, my, my favourite story from your era is the invasion. So it's a, two, it's a two part question. Did you know when you were making the invasion that was the way the programme was heading towards for the 70s? And what's your best memory from the invasion? I think the invasion, one of the things I think about Invasion, apart from it being a brilliant story, is Kevin Stoney, who I thought was superb. I thought the sets were really good in Invasion, and I thought it was really well directed. And the twosome between um, Kevin and Peter Halliday, oh, yes. I mean, I, I just thought it was, a, they were brilliant together. Packer, yes. And of course we had Dougie Camfield. And Dougie, you know, yeah. Uh, my, my, vision of the invasion is the, the Cybermen coming out the sewers and, and there's St Paul's Cathedral in the background and they're walking down the street. But no, Dougie again was always looking for, for humour, You could, he was looking for a bit of humour and in the beginning of the invasion we were walking down the street and he said well you just walk down and this car comes and you get... And I said would it be, can we do one of those sort of comedy where you start to walk and you start to walk a bit faster and in the end you're running like that you know, he's go, cool, love it, love it. So we did that bit, and then later on, when we have to get into to Pat, um, Kevin Stoney's um, Rolls Royce, Dougie said, Fraser, Fraser, I've got an idea. You get in the back, and then you run around and get into the shotgun seat, so when Packer goes to get in, you lean out. Dougie, again, was, you know, always a little bit of humour as well. Yeah. And, and he loved directing all the, the, the army stuff. Because he was ex-army, and then, you know he liked to paint him. So, are you watching the um, sort of the revival? Do you watch um, any of the the, the new series? Uh, Jodie, yes, uh, Peter Carlin. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I love it. I love Jodie. Um, I'm not 
100% convinced about three companions. Okay, okay. I don't know why. I think it may be a bit overload. And I don't think they get... I do think Bradley Walsh is brilliant. Love Bradley. Are you enjoying Bradley? Love Bradley Walsh. Yes. Absolutely. But I, I don't think, because there are three companions, I'm not sure that they get a fair bite of the cherry, as yeah. it were. I mean, for, for me... Um, I don't know what people think for, for me, um, watching it as, as a fan of the show, aside from, you know, working on it as well, um, I, it was Amy Pond for me. I loved, I loved Amy Pond as a companion. You know, I, I actually liked Amy Pond uh, more than the, you know, the Clara Oswald character, to be Woo! honest. Yeah. Does, someone else, does someone else agree with me? Excellent. Yeah. What was your thoughts on Danny Pink? What a drip. I was so glad when the Cybermen zapped him up. And I'm glad that Joni kept her Yorkshire accent. Yes. She didn't go all PC, but I, you know, I must, just, you know, I must speak like this. No, I'm glad she, she... Absolutely. I think um, reviving it, um, you know, they, they, they changed a lot of things, you know, they put a, well, a, a budget into it, didn't they? They took it away from your, what yours were, the children's television side of things, and then really, really ramped it up. But, I mean, I said you were there in the in the beginning. You know, it was you guys who set you know those those foundations for what it's become. A few years ago, we, Wendy and I were doing um, a commentary for one of these uh, shows. Uh, we both for coffee, and we were just talking. I said, I wonder what you know, De um, David Tennant's budget is. And somebody said, Well, hang on a minute. I think David Tennant's sets cost twelve thousand pounds. And this guy came back with a, a, a folder. With it, like a solicitor's vote, blew the dust off it. <laughs> so, right, um, Ronald Lee Hunt was on £110 an episode. You, Fraser, were on £40 an episode. Wendy, you were 25 guineas an episode. I thought, 25 guineas. Oh, yeah, guineas. <laughs> and I thought, the BBC, throw the tapes away, burn them, but keep the paperwork. <laughs> really? Right. I, I know. The video, the tapes have gone. I mean, trying to find, I mean, you can find so many gifts of you. Is that what you call them, gifts? You can pull that in and you're doing all kinds of stuff. And Yeah, the GIF thing. So you're doing loads of stuff, but actually trying to find the episodes have gone. And yet, you can go back and find that you were on 12 pence a day. Amazing. Any more questions? Anybody else want to know anything? All right, I'll come down to you. Yeah. Who's, who's it there? Hello, you all right? Hi, Fraser. Um, Wendy's there as well. Yeah, well, I want to ask Fraser. <laughs> Should have gone Specsavers. Um, I did. Um, when you're doing uh, Patrick and Jamie in Big Finish, you switch from one to the other in a, a single scene. It must be very difficult to do Patrick's voice. Do you, have you any comments on that? Uh, how do you find doing that? Uh, well, people have said you do all Jamie's voice first and then all Patrick's, but I, I, I do it all in one. I mark. When, when, when a doctor speaks, my uh, blue felt, blue for the targets. When Jamie speaks, red, red for the kills. So my script goes blue, red, red, blue, blue, red, yep, storyteller, whatever. And you know, people say, oh, is it hard work? No, going down a mine is hard work. Pulling out a thousand washers a day with the defender, that's hard work. It's, it's not. Yeah, but hang on a minute. You, I, I have to say, he's absolutely brilliant, because when we're doing a story together and I'm in the booth next to him, and we, we've both got our headsets in our little cabins, um, I can see Fraser out of the corner of my eye, and sometimes I think, I honestly don't know how you do that, because you, re you really don't, I've known you have a, um, the Doctor, Jamie, narrator, man up the stairs, something else, Jamie, Patrick, um, and uh, you, you, you have conversations with yourself all the time, and you switch like that, and I think, I think it's amazing what you do, I, really, I hate to pay you a compliment, I hate it, I hate it, but it's true, I think it's, I think it's, you're exceptional, and, and Patrick, when he does Patrick, I can also see that physically he turns into Pat. I can see all the little movements that Pat used to do coming, and it's uh, it's it's. So it's really 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 you stop moving your hands, straight. I said I can't do it without moving my hands. I have to. Oh, yes, well, you go that way. I go. We'll do this. Uh, yes. Uh, where are you? Uh, yes. 
No, what you did have to stop doing was jumping because Pat used to stamp his yes, feet to do it. Yeah, here. And they used to say, Fraser, 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 you can't stamp. It's coming over like a. But everything else you can still do. Thank you. It is good fun, and, and I always say to Big Finish, you know, if Patrick was alive today, you know, he, you have to pay him. Fraser, we're paying you one fee. So I would say I get paid to do Jamie, and I do Patrick's for the love, for the love of the guy, to keep his memory still going for the fans. So I do his voice for nothing, and I get paid to do mine. That's why I think. What's your memories of working with the Plus Corp? Oh, the brig. The brig, he was just delightful and gorgeous, but just delightful, wasn't he? Oh, lovely, lovely, man. lovely man. I loved his, we used to play cards and lie dice and, you know, he'd be, you know, Dougie Camfield would come to this little green room where we were playing cards. Are you boys coming to work today? Don't worry, Dougie, old boy, you, you have got a good hand here. We, we know the lines, we know the lines, don't worry, you know. He was just a, a lovely, a lovely guy. And if you drive, you've got a line, you, you go, uh, oh, Douglas, am I meant to be good here or? Nicholas has died. Where are we picking up from? Oh, that's great. He'd, he'd always say, where, where am I supposed to be? But he loved his horse racing. We, we both loved horse racing. And I had a horse called Joe Sugden, funny enough, and the Sun newspaper said, um, can we borrow your horse just for the day, for the Derby Day? We're going to use him as a, a prize to some Sun readers. And he's going to run at Epsom. Not at the Derby, but in the big race before the Derby. And you'll still come along as one great guest. So I said, Nicholas, do you want to come to the racing? It was top hat and tail. Oh, no, 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 no. So the uh, car picked me up and took, went to Nicholas's place, picked him up. And we got along like, it was that way. And, yeah. Well, why we, we took, got to this field and there's a helicopter as well there. He went, you're kidding. And this helicopter took us to Epsom and landed in the middle of the downs and took, we had lobster and caviar. He, did, oh, he had a marvellous day, he loved it. And he looked great dressed in his top hat and tails. He looked lovely. And he, he never forgot my birthday and every year I got the perfume that I like. Every single year, right up until the day he died. He was, he was just delightful. Right, we're right to the right now. Okay, over to you darling. Right, so going from the revival, are there any companion storylines or characters you two would have really loved to play or have as part of your storyline? Storylines that we that you, you would, would like to... Yeah, that you personally would have loved to play in the modern... There was one funny of the, um, that I found a script in my garage called The Prison in Space. And this was one that I think um, Peter Bryant said, no, you're having too much fun. This is a, a comic. It's where we were up in space and all the women were short black trousers and, and tight shirts and all the men were, you know, subservient dressed as women. And it, in fact, years later, the, the two Ronnies did it called The Woman That Turned. They got the script and did it. There. And I said, I wish we could have done that. I said, no, you're having too much fun. You're going to do the crotons instead. So I'd like to have done the prison in space because um, again, Jamie had to dress as a woman because the doctor said, you're the, you're the hairy-legged Highlander, you're used to wearing a skirt. It's not a skirt, it's a kilt. Yeah, well, you can wear, you know, you can wear a dress. And we, I, I had to escape the prison cell dressed as a woman, you know. And that would have been a great fun story, but they wouldn't let us do it. But we did it later, on, on Big Finish. Oh, did you? Because I took it to Jason High Gallifrey and he, he passed it on. I, would have, I, I think for me, I'd love to, to see um, what um, Missy's reaction would be to Jamie in a kilt. Um, I think that could be quite interesting. And, uh, or maybe I Alex love Kingston. the character of Missy. Is Missy is Missy's just... Missy is one of my favourite. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can, can you imagine what she would her. be like with Jamie in his kilt? And then throwing um, Alex Kingston as well. <laughs> as River Song. That would, they would eat you alive! <laughs> I want to work with Jodie Whittaker and say, Doctor, my legs are better than yours. <laughs> been absolutely brilliant so if you do want to um, to meet these amazing people they are around all day they're upstairs you can 
get things signed, you've got photos right the way back through your history as well, haven't you? Um, so um, if you want a selfie, we have got a selfie corner up there. Everything that we're raising money for today, like we've already said, it is non-profit. It's all for the Christie to exterminate cancer. So um, the selfie corner, if you want a selfie with these guys, um, there's a bucket there, you know, just chuck a note in. Everything is going to try and help people who are suffering and fighting cancer. And that is what we're doing here today. Um, so let's have a huge, huge round of applause for my gorgeous friends, Frieza Hines and Wendy Padbury. Now, I, you know, I have known that it's been over 25 years our paths. We used to have a radio show in studios next to each other, BBC Radio York. And yeah, so he was in the studio next to me, and yeah, so that's a long time ago, isn't it? And yeah. Now you mentioned the cancer, of course, some people may not know, but 20 years ago I did have bowel cancer. And I, I went, my doctor had a little, had a look around, and uh, I went to see the surgeon, he said, you've got bowel cancer. And the minute you hear that word, suddenly there's a bowling ball in your stomach. You think, why me? What have I done wrong? And it's, it, it just, you know, I, they always say that there's always somebody, no somebody, or two people away that's got cancer, so it's, it's something we've got to keep fighting. Well, thank you for being there. Hopefully one day we'll see you back on Emmerdale. We need Joe Sutton back. We need you back as well. The amazing